This is Biblical Word Plays Part 1. In this video, we will be discussing three Hebrew words and show how they interface with English in the form of word plays. The first Hebrew word we want to discuss is Strong's number 216, which is pronounced OR and has the principal meaning of light or sun. It can be transliterated in various ways, including O-R, O-R-E, O-W-R, and O-H-R. Our first wordplay example is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Please take a look at the word Lord in this verse and focus on the two middle letters, O-R, in Lord. As you can see, the Hebrew word or, meaning light, appears in the middle of the word Lord and highlights the fact that we are literally or, that is light, in the Lord and should therefore walk in his light. As a side light to this, in Psalms 27, verse 1, it declares, The Lord is my light and my salvation. As children, how do we go about walking in the Lord's light? The short answer is by taking hold of his word, which, like the word Lord, also has the same two letters, O-R, in the middle, again spelling light in Hebrew and identifying the Lord's word with the light we are supposed to walk in. Obedience to God's word and his Torah, or law, are essential elements in the process of walking in the light of the Lord. And like the words Lord and word, Torah also has O-R, or light, in its spelling, identifying it with light. Do you see the pattern? But this should come to no surprise, since Proverbs 6.23 affirms that the Torah, or law, is light. Obeying God's Torah is an integral part of walking in the light of the Lord. As a confirmation of this, in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, it declares to the Torah, that is law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The following scriptures shed further light on this discussion and demonstrate how consistent God is in his word. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 133. Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity, that is breaking of the Torah, lawlessness, have dominion over me. And in conjunction with this last verse, in Psalms 37, verse 23, it states, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, it describes the pathway of light that the righteous followers of the Lord walk in. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The Hebrew word for path used here is pronounced orach and is Strong's number 734. As you can see, it begins with or, which is light in Hebrew, and for the just indeed is a path that shines more and more light until the perfect day. When we walk in the auric of the Lord's word and keep his Torah, we will naturally produce the works of righteousness. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus, or Yeshua, who is the light of the world, commands us, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Once again, we see the Hebrew word or within the framework of works, which shines forth for men to see and brings glory to our Heavenly Father. 
And speaking of our Heavenly Father, in James chapter 1, verse 17, it declares, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Our Heavenly Father, who is the Father of lights, is perfect in every way and has perfect gifts to give those who walk in his light to help them also become perfect. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Jesus commands us, Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. In this verse, Jesus commands us to be perfect. We become perfect by taking hold of God's perfect spiritual law and applying it in our lives. This is how we are converted from the old carnal man to the new spiritual man. In Psalms 19.7 it states, The law, or Torah, of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. This conversion process is also described in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation or conduct, the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And in James chapter 1 verse 25 it adds, But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 through 18, it also describes how we are converted into the glorious image of the Lord by means of God's perfect law of liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass or mirror, the mirror of God's law, the glory of the Lord is what we behold and are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Through the works of the law, we develop patterns of righteous behavior as we put off our old carnal nature and put on God's divine nature. As our works of righteousness shine forth more and more, we are transformed spiritually and brought closer and closer to a state of perfection. We actually develop God's perfect righteous character through this process. Finally, on that perfect day when Jesus Christ returns and we are resurrected, we will be made completely perfect, just as Proverbs 4.18 describes, the perfect day. The Hebrew word that is translated perfect, as in the perfect day, is Strong's number 3556, and literally means to stand up erect, which is literally a description of the resurrection. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul also alludes to this same process of conversion, which culminates in the perfect day of our resurrection. For of this I am confident, that he who has begun a good work within you will go on to perfect it in preparation for the day of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus declared, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We again find the Hebrew word or embedded within the spelling of world. And in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, it further adds, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, from the Message Bible, it states this, Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. 
and continuing further here are still more examples for or and light. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 it states, Jesus only has life forever, living in light to which no man may come near, whom no man has seen or is able to see, to whom be honor and power forever, so be it. And in Job chapter 38 verse 24, where is the path to the origin of light? And Job chapter 38 verse 35, can you take charge of the lightning bolts and have them report to you for orders? And now our final example for the Hebrew word or, meaning light, it is Psalm 119, 130 from the Message Bible. Break open your words. Let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. The Lord has blessed ordinary people like you and me with or, or light, out of his word to understand the meaning of his word and to walk in its light. Now, on to the second Hebrew word we want to cover in this video. The second Hebrew word we want to discuss in this video is Strong's number 5030, pronounced Navi, or Navi, which means prophecy, prophesy, or prophet. The first wordplay verse for Navi is found in Matthew chapter 11, verses 7 through 10. And as they went their way, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to behold? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft raiment are in king's houses. But wherefore went you out? To see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. And you see the obvious wordplay, of whom it is written, Now behold, I send my messenger, the messenger, the prophet John. The next scriptural example is Micah chapter 2, verse 7. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. And here's your wordplay. He shall even not be the prophet of this people. And the next verse is Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 9. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. And here's your word play. Mine heart within me is broken, is broken not because of the prophets. The last Hebrew word we will discuss in this video is Strong's number 6674, pronounced so and spelled T-S-O. It means anything filthy. The feminine form, soa, Strong's number 6675, also means filthiness, and both forms can include any kind of filth that issues out of the body, including dung and vomit. Our first example is Proverbs chapter 30, verses 11 through 12. A generation curses its father and does not bless its mother. A generation pure in its own eyes, and yet not washed from its own filth. Then Isaiah 28, verse 8. For all, all tables are full of filthy vomit, so that there is no more place. And then from the Message Bible, Isaiah ch chapter 28, verse 8. Every table is covered with vomit. They live in vomit. Is that so? 
And who do you think you are to teach us? Who are you to lord it over us? We're not babies in diapers to be talked down to by such as you. And there's the obvious wordplay there. This concludes part one of this video on biblical wordplays. In our studies, we have found literally thousands of wordplay examples similar to these. And many cross the boundaries of language and interface with other tongues, demonstrating that God is not the author of confusion, but beauty and harmony. At the Tower of Babel, God did confuse the languages, but now in these end times, he is opening up his word and showing those who have eyes to see and ears to hear that his word is anything but confused. These word plays prove the very inspiration of his word across all languages and demonstrate his understanding is infinite. Shalom.